Well, we haven't finished. We have now our two colleagues. Uh, I would have to excuse, I would excuse myself but, now. But that, that, that's you. fine. Thank Both you. are Thank for you. Germany, mind you. Uh, Mr. Henning Nipschild, who is uh, uh, handling international cooperation in the German Minister of Agriculture, but which is called the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food. And Mr. Stefan Hafner, uh, who is uh, the, within the International Bureau at the German Aerospace Center. Agriculture is not directly related to aerospace, at least not yet. But uh, Mr. Hafner is within the DLR, the, specifically the project management agency related to the German Aerospace Center. So both gentlemen are going to take us through uh, the summary of uh, this very, very rich uh, workshop and together uh, with the indications as to the way forward and uh, the wrap up and the scheme in order to make uh, this uh, NAEA, North Africa Europe Alliance, uh, come to life uh, as soon as we all wish it to come to life. So, without further ado, uh, Henning and Stefan, the floor is yours. Please start in the way you prefer. Um, Stefan, would you like to, me to start with a wrap up and then you come with a more leading perspectives? Yes, please, Henning. I will uh, present the way forward. So please make uh, the wrap up, Henning. Okay, I'd like to share my screen if possible. So, Dora, how much time did you give me? Well, uh, I have sent you an email saying that we have stolen 15 minutes from you. So both of you have a full half hour. That is hope, hoping that our participants accept to give us 15 minutes more. Uh, I'm not even sure that I need so much. My name is Henny Knipschild. I'll try to do the wrap up, which is not really easy with this diversity of input which we had. I actually, and I hope you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. I, I actually tried to put together the, the hot topics here. Um, I think it was very interesting to hear, okay, we're talking about private sector and here we have SDG 8, to, which says that we're promoting sustained inclusive and sustainable economic growth. And uh, in its dealing with decent work for all. And then we are actually working in a globalized world and we have issues like food security, climate change, COVID. And um, we're working along the agri-food changes and, and we're uh, working in the tension of urban, peri-urban and urban systems and that we are aiming at finding a convergence of common problems. So uh, these crises which we had in the late month brings us actually back to the roots. We have to see where we are standing. We're coming back to food production and good food production. And we are working in a very complex relation between two continents. And on these continents, as we heard from the wording, we have different worlds. We have North Africa, we have Sub-Saharan Africa, we have the countries in Europe, and uh, here we have highlighted the options of collaboration between the continents, but also we have highlighted the importance of South-South collaborating about the commodities like olives and dates. Uh, we heard about the importance of uh, food production for the European countries in our winter, the necessity to look at logistics, packing, storing, certification standards, and regulatory policy-based and food risk analysis. Um, we actually came down to these topics. So how do we work with the private sector 
and how can we work with the entrepreneurs who are actually the source of creativity and we should really tap on this. And uh, it also showed in quite a number of comments that there is always a challenge to give access to information from research, to give access to data funds and inform the different uh, actors of, of entrepreneurships to how to find the access to market and how to obtain sufficient training. Of course, it was always interesting to hear that in Europe, that's our experience here, uh, we have got a few banks which were created by farmers like Raiffeisen and Rabobank, which are based on the same model. And this shows that programs must enroll on the ground. This is what happened to Raiffeisen and Rabobank, which actually evolved our rural areas. So then I tried to come up with uh, the topics, what should the Alliance provide? And I found a very nice statement. It said, the Alliance must become the framework for ambitious innovation and catalytic change within the AU EU partnership. And the Alliance must coordinate this multi actors uh, the, uh, case said that, and I think it is a very good motto for such an alliance. And um, it was highlighted again that these results have to be achieved on the ground. And for this reason, we must actually uh, uh, map out the effects of, of our challenges like climate change to react and make the information available to the actors. In addition, it was said that uh, there must be an enhanced investment into research and innovation for product transformation, and uh, that it is very important to involve the local actors into research and innovation, and only this can lead to success if we closely involve the private sector. For me, it was very interesting to hear about scaling up to scale up resources to meet the investment gaps in rural areas. This should be one of our topics which we have as this is concerning food security, agriculture and nutrition and the research to uh, boost production. Um, our colleague from the Netherlands Embassy brought us back to the essence that the Alliance should connect people and neighbors as we are neighbors here in Northern Africa, here in Europe, here between Europe and Africa, and that we should always tap into valuable opportunities to link the farmers to the markets and to trigger local public and private partnerships. So this already shows the approaches. And uh, uh, one uh, contribution said, that we should always lies with the correct and adequate collaborative level to facilitate that uh, each actor plays their role uh, appropriately and to have uh, a transparent reflectance of the diverse agendas of the actors. It was also said that it is very important to have a very effective contribution of the private sector to a joint theory of change and impact pathway and to build on the research demand of the farmers and to jointly launch technology lead trials together with uh, our actors. In addition, we saw because of the we had the participation of very relevant international partners that it's very important for the platform to integrate the EU AU actors the important projects, projects uh, like Prima, the Innovation Council, IFDC, City Agri, Food Knowledge Incubators, Green Deals. We have these very nice approaches on which we can tap. And it all comes down actually that we should create joint business plans to assure sustainable production. 
And the wonderful thing about this board is that I copied all these texts from you, of course. Um, it was emphasized that there has to be an in-depth training of actors uh, in linked with short-term investments in order to uh, really react towards the uh, spontaneous activities on the markets and at the same time to facilitate regular meetings to exchange and share innovations and to think about the joint uh, uh, theory of change and impact path. Now it was of course a topic here of our workshop to expand, expand responsible digitization. I think this word responsible is very important, especially because I'm in charge of digitization and we know what digitization can also cause. But if we do it in such a way that we allow farmers to play a crucial role to facilitate uh, uh, our process and to help us to identify the proper risks and to allow farmers uh, to play their role as the first pillar of the private sector, then we will probably come to this, what someone called the creation of new consortium models, the creation of digital innovation hubs. And in this way, if we work together with the target groups, we can address both industrial agriculture and family farming. Now, I'm already almost finished here. I have this let's say reddish cards here uh, we had we were shown the different dialogue approaches especially by our colleague from Sirad talking about the flash expertise the business to rich research models to go much more for design thinking in our theories of change and not to forget very important aspects like open source open data and open knowledge and that in these days, uh, digitization was very important to actually address the challenges of COVID and that there's a great need um, actually to, uh, to work in this field. And uh, it was highlighted by our last speaker and that we have three uh, topics of which I must ask you for help. That's why I put my question mark here. Uh, one was digital farming platform. The second was precision agriculture. And I think the third one was sustainable agriculture. Please help me out once I finish this sentence, but it was a recommendation that we actually build uh, on these three pillars and on this knowledge we gained from this workshop our future workshops. Thank you very much. And please forgive me if I have maybe forgotten something important and please give your comment if I have forgotten something. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Henning, for Thank this you, uh, excellent just, uh, wrap up. Just Dora, to please. Answer, sorry, just to answer Henning's question, uh, Dr. Sharif Gabali mentioned the Green Deal. And I think his idea was to study the way the Green Deal has been structured in Europe to see in what way it could be replicated in Northern Africa. Okay, so I can erase the question mark now. Thank you very much, Dora. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm. Excellent, and I'm always impressed what we are able to do here. And in particular, since COVID-19 in the digital sphere, um, I'm sharing now briefly my uh, screen here. Uh, thank you very much again, Henning, um, for this excellent wrap up. My name is uh, Stefan Alexander Hafner. I'm from the German Aerospace Center, serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And together with my colleagues from Ghana, CSIR Stepri, um, I'm coordinating the working group Actors, Alliances and Policies in LEAP for FNSSA. And this workshop today is uh, one of our results of our uh, ambitions towards an AU-EU platform for research and innovation uh, in food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So 
we support here uh, the North Africa uh, EU alliance process and just for saving time I'm not going here through all the institutions um, just to avoid the impression uh, that I'm only uh, talking here uh, about me or from me. You see here our team of the Actors, Alliances uh, and Policies Working Group in Leap for FMSSA. And we are mainly working uh, on the basis of the program and innovation management cycle model, which is a meta governance model suggested to be the basis for the coming AU EU platform uh, on research and uh, innovation for food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So I'm, uh, as a, as a wrap-up and uh, to look uh, to the way forward, I'm uh, a bit contextualizing uh, where we are. We heard this morning from our current coordinator, Filippo de Jugena from CIRAT, that uh, on the short term it is envisaged to establish an IRC, an um, international research um, uh, consortium, but on the mid and, and on the long term perspective, we are of course planning more. And um, the North Africa EU Alliance, as well as the West Africa EU Alliance that uh, we uh, were allowed uh, to establish are playing into this platform that we are about to build. And I will briefly uh, introduce you a bit into that, uh, not that long, but um, you should know in which context uh, you are working now here. Um, the question is um, how to build uh, uh, an alliance, uh, West Africa or North Africa EU alliance. In your case here, I'm referring now to the North Africa EU alliance. You only should be aware that you are working in a context together with colleagues um, in West Africa as well. And uh, we will also support each other and, and uh, we will also inspire each other. So we were coming from the situation that uh, we have different actors and themes and processes existing in the region of West Africa, North Africa and the European Union. The plan here is to co-develop uh, with uh, you together collaboration mechanisms. And for that, uh, we suggest uh, to think in three pillars. One is to establish a sorting house mechanism. And for that, we are right now establishing in the North Africa EU Alliance also four working groups. The first working group is to design a theory of change and impact pathway in the field of food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. The UFM, as I mentioned already uh, in the middle of our meeting here, um, has already uh, three TCIPs, that's the abbreviation for theory of change and impact pathway on health, renewable energy and climate change. We will work here on a TCIP in FNSSA, which stands for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. Working Group 2 is dedicated to design a communication concept. And we talked, we heard today uh, a lot about that, uh, about the big diversity of stakeholders to be addressed with that. We are working here in Working Group 2 on this issue. In working group number three, we are addressing the issue of data and knowledge management. And last but not least, in working group four, you hopefully, um, we are working um, on issues towards the private sector. The second pillar of uh, towards building the North Africa EU Alliance is um, to uh, co-design funding mechanisms. And we are doing this in, we title this Dialogues for Action because dialogues are nice, we also need action. So this is about mobilizing resources for investing in research and innovation and capacity building. This could be in-kind contributions or funds um, that might be raised. This pillar is dedicated um, to, to this issue and um, Henning, uh, who made uh, the wrap up, is co-leading together uh, with uh, NRF South Africa, um, a sub working group uh, in our working group uh, on these dialogues uh, for action. So in that sense, you will also hear from our side. And the third pillar is about, is dedicated to uh, circular communication or call it dialogues with end users of knowledge. 
Um, I come later a bit more into the details of that, just here to show you um, what is the overall context, your working group here, and we hope very much that you all will join the working group number four is in. Um, the sorting house mechanism and the sorting house network is a special element uh, deduced from the program and innovation management cycle. Uh, in this sorting house mechanism, um, different expertise comes together. And uh, the three uh, main activities um, in uh, the sorting house mechanisms are to design a theory of change and impact pathway. And just in short, a theory of change and impact pathway consists of a situation analysis of a roadmap uh, with a desired impact pathway, which are described, and a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept. A theory of change and impact pathway uh, does only make sense if it is co-produced by all stakeholders. So therefore, this is our intention um, to um, establish this inclusive process together with you. Uh, in the sorting house mechanism and with the sorting house network, you are part of the sorting house network. I, I should underline this here. In the communication concept, uh, we are intending not only to list which stakeholders are we talking here about, because there's a lot of unclarity about that, uh, but also how are these um, stakeholders related with each other, what are their needs, and other typical dialogues, for example, between researchers and farmers, and uh, what are the needs there, what can we do uh, later as a platform to serve the needs uh, of these typical dialogues between uh, the stakeholders, and to make it uh, a circular dialogue, therefore it's, it's uh, shown here like that. Uh, because uh, it's not a one-way road from science um, to end users. This is not our thinking here. Um, the third element is um, to have a closer look to the collaboration in the field of data and knowledge management. And for that, we are intending within the next uh, year to uh, write in the working group number three for data and knowledge management um, uh, a document about the interfaces and the potential collaboration between actors who are holding knowledge and actors who are dealing with data. And I'm formulating it um, purposefully right in this way, because farmers, and uh, even if uh, they are analphabets, they're holding knowledge. So we have to find um, solutions um, to create interfaces. This will feed, of course, into the communication concept and um, the working group uh, number four. And again, we hope that you all join this working group will feed in all three pillars. And I will tell you later how you can contribute. What you see here is in principle, uh, our multi stakeholder approach. I'll not go too deep into the detail um, because we don't, uh, we, we don't have too much time today. This was more here to introduce you. And I, I uh, saw in the chat that one colleague uh, was complaining, we need more time for discussion. Definitely, yes. And we will work in the working groups um, exactly towards that to have more time to discuss more. So the multi-stakeholder approach is what you see here. And in this dark green circle, you see on the local level, the stakeholders that we have so far in mind, decision makers in sub-national entities, in uh, communities, villages, and so on and so forth. Research and innovation institutions, institutions for capacity building, agribusiness, professional organizations and companies, the farmer organizations and farmers, NGOs, funders, and the end users and, and consumers um, in the system. So this is the, 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 the local uh, level. The next level is, um, and, and this year distinguished in, 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 a, in a geographical order, uh, the stakeholders. On the national level, we are talking here about 82 um, member states if it comes to the AU-EU platform some less uh, if it comes to the North Africa EU alliance, but this doesn't matter here now. We, we just want to show you um, at the end how many member states we want to bring together with this platform, how many ministries, programs, projects, and of course the private sector on this level. The next level is, we call this the multi-country level, um, there, um, the African regions are relevant, but also 
uh, the institutions uh, like today uh, mentioned Nasro, Korav, Azarika, Cicadesa, uh, Sils, Waskal, and we are already uh, working with them uh, in the West Africa EU Alliance or part of them. The next level is the bicontinental, the continental and the bicontinental level. And there we are dealing with uh, the high level policy dialogue between the AU and the EU with programs, projects and institutions and networks uh, on this uh, geographical level. The idea so far is to organize the sorting house network then in hubs. So on the bicontinental level, on the multi-country level, on the national and on the local level. But again, these are um, ideas uh, that we suggest and we want to work these ideas uh, out together with you so that uh, at the end of next year, we will have um, a concept and several documents which will feed into the platform that we want. What you see here, and I'll keep this very short, these are the timelines, both of the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance. And you see here, it's color coded in color blue. This is the West Africa EU Alliance and in color green here, this is the North Africa EU Alliance. And we are right here now in, uh, in June, uh, 2021. This here is uh, the workshop uh, on uh, from the private sector working group uh, number four. The other uh, three working groups here again listed for the theory of change and impact pathway for the communication concept and data and knowledge managers. We hope very much that very soon and after this meeting here, you might want to join also other working groups uh, on or at least here the working group on private sector that um, we can take off that we meet very soon, that um, in working group number four, uh, you are collecting ideas and suggestions for the way ahead. And again, you are invited to join the other working groups too, because the private sector working group should feed into these other activities and documents that we wish to have at hand um, at the end of next year. But the next milestone here is in December this year, where we are intending to organize a workshop between all working groups so that all four working groups uh, will share their results, will share their documents, discuss them. And this is very important that funders are also involved uh, in this working group. And hopefully not only um, the public funders, uh, the, namely the, the ministries, but also other uh, private sector funders. Uh, before June 2022, then, uh, we hope to finalize uh, these uh, working documents that um, have been uh, drafted more as, as templates than anything else. Um, and um, in August 2022, we uh, will organize a final uh, workshop or a conference. Uh, we will figure this out in the next month, how we will organize that so that uh, the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance and other African regions come together. We had a, a very uh, lovely workshop. It was the second North Africa EU Alliance workshop uh, last month. And um, fortunately, we also got some colleagues on board uh, from East Africa and Central Africa who are already uh, about to learn from this process. And we hope also to establish, um, for, for example, an EIA uh, process for East Africa, EU Alliance or SAEA for uh, South, Southern um, Africa, EU Alliance. So let's see. Just briefly here, uh, because uh, this contextualization of you doing is very important. What is the program and innovation management cycle? And we, we keep this very short here. It's a, it's a process model and we deduced uh, several elements for the platform from that. So first uh, we suggest to imagine our collaboration in the future, um, starting with the prioritization uh, process. So for that, uh, again, the already mentioned theory of change and impact pathway is needed. So this is a document, it's the starting point of a program and innovation management cycle. And we come together and we do this in working group number one uh, and, and write a situation analysis. 
And uh, this is not falling out of the blue or it's a new invention of some experts. Uh, we all know that we have our ideas, that we have our perception of the situation. We have documents which describes already the situation in the North African uh, uh, region. So all this could be come together here. And this then should lead to the development of so-called roadmaps. So these roadmaps consist of uh, agendas for research and innovation and capacity building. And these roadmaps also describe desired impact pathways. And these impact pathways are described uh, along which outputs are desired, which outcome and which impact. So um, another element then, and therefore it's important that in December we meet the funders is how do we monitor that? How do we uh, evaluate uh, that, what we are doing here together, and what do we learn from that. So in from December on, we should be in the situation to develop a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept together with the funders in the North Africa EU lines. And um, this then will lead into the second phase of the program and innovation management cycle. We call it here the investment phase. The dialogues for action are relevant here. Once the funders agree, yes, we will invest in which way ever in uh, uh, along the theory of change and impact pathway, we can start working. We can start working in projects uh, where researchers and innovators might work already uh, together and we will get results. What are we doing with these results? And this is relevant in the phase number three of the program and innovation management cycle, we analyze these uh, results. And this is done by the sorting house network and you can be a part of that. So we analyze this research output and we uh, try to um, design recommendations. We try to translate this research output for practice. For practice, this is the fourth phase of the program and innovation management cycle, the application phase. This research output is meant to be applied and we make sure through a smart network of stakeholders, through uh, a well elaborated communication concept to reach all stakeholders so that we can benefit the most uh, from research output as possible. So the long-term vision with a program and innovation management cycle is that after one program and innovation management cycle, we will come again to a starting point where we must reflect on what did we learn. So we would have a proper impact analysis and imagine for a program and innovation management cycle 10 years roughly, but this is an assumption. So you take one round with a PIMC, you learn, you take another round with a PIMC with a new theory of change and impact pathway that might have been written in 10 years. And then after 20 years, you're here at that point. So just to make you understanding what is the meaning here of this spiral. So the long-term vision for the PIMC model is a succession of cycles. And the next cycle will be start with the coming um, international uh, um, research uh, consortium. So this should be the basis of this process. And what we find here, or what we what we see and suggest here, to um, uh, is to to see this to, to uh, consider four main fields of coordination for the AUEU platform. So one is, uh, of course, the funders' networks um, have to be coordinated. We have the sorting house network. And um, there, um, I, I forgot to include this here, the private sector plays a, a, a very important and a central role. We have the sphere of the uh, knowledge management and data management and uh, their, its interfaces, which uh, have to be coordinated, and uh, the field of communication that has to be uh, coordinated. So this is the context in which uh, you are. And um, the question now for you might be still, how do you join this NAEA process? You did it already because you visited uh, this meeting here today. Um, I mentioned the four working groups. You see them here on the right side. You could become a part of this process. Uh, you could become a part of the sorting house network and uh, to develop the sorting house mechanism. So the question is now, which working group do you, in which working group do you want uh, to contribute? And we are also looking for chairs of these working groups. And I think at this point, 
I will, um, uh, no, just a minute, Dora, then I will hand over to you. Please inform us whether you want to join one of those working groups here. You have here, you can just make a, a screenshot if you like. Um, you can inform uh, Mrs. Jackie Cardo from the Network of African Science Academies and me and inform us just with your name, with your institution and your email address in which working group you want to contribute. And uh, in case you want to chair a working group, let us also know about that. With regard to working group number four, I assume that um, Dora uh, will organize this here with her last words um, in this meeting. I thank you very much. Again, I must repeat myself, it's an honor, it's a pleasure uh, to be a part of this process. Please understand that Leap for Evan SSA is nothing asking from you. We are supporting you. Ask something from us how we can support you in um, the design and in the establishment and in the growing of the North Africa EU Alliance. I thank you very much in the name of the Working Group Actors Alliances and Policies from Leap for Evan SSA. And I hand over to you, Dora. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you very much, Henning for the excellent wrap up and thank you to, to you all. Uh, I, 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 I knew that with all this diversity of uh, profiles, we would have a very rich uh, workshop, but it, it, the output is really beyond uh, one's expectation. Uh, we have very, very clear in the, uh, guidelines as to uh, the key uh, the key sectors to explore. And the interesting thing is that a number of them uh, coincide and are common to more than one category of, uh, of entity. And that is extremely enriching. Uh, I do confirm that, uh, as you have seen explained by Stefan, that the uh, North Africa Europe Alliance has several facets and um, the uh, private sector one is uh, now starting and starting uh, very strongly. I would like to mention that, well, of course, I will be uh, managing the private sector working group, but uh, more important as well is the fact that, as explained by Stefan, the, um, the connection to the other groups is pretty obvious, such as communication, for example. Uh, so uh, what I would like to suggest to all of you, because we have taken already who, uh, more, than, uh, more than 20 minutes of your time, that we will be sending you a, a draft uh, plan for the follow-up. And also, um, I would like to mention that all the sessions have been recorded uh, as all of you have kindly accepted uh, to share your exchange uh, jointly and collectively. They will be put on the website and the YouTube of Leap for FNSSA. And uh, we, we welcome from now uh, your suggestion, your comments, your decision to join from now and uh, we definitely look forward to uh, a very soon meeting, uh, whether it will be before or during the summer period, that is something we will discuss among each other. But in any case, we will send to all of you a follow-up mail with uh, the proper indications. Thank you very much. And goodbye to all of you. Thank you, Dora. Bye. Thanks Thank to much, everyone. Dora. Bye. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you.